Alrighty, hello every folks and good morning. So this is going to be the first of a few reviews on the uh, kind of small handful of overhaul mods that we have for Tactics Ogre Reborn. Um, just kind of giving some feedback, thoughts, all that kind of thing. Um, okay, so this is the first one on the list. Uh, this is what's it called uh, the Tor Debloat and General Rebalance mod. So I want to point out that the first two that we're going to be covering are currently uh, basically kind of demos of sorts uh, that uh, are functional up to the end of Chapter 1, or at least are, you know, kind of intended to be up until the end of Chapter 1. Um, so that's where we're kind of dropping it off right here, uh, just kind of right before Balmamusa. Um, so here's, generally speaking, what this one was uh, was doing. So this one attempted to go and create a kind of more SNES-like feeling uh, with its uh, with its designs here. Um, a couple of notes. Uh, if we're going for the SNES feeling, how do we not have unlocked weapons for everybody? We gotta have that. Um, but no, um, they did the best that they could with uh, what was available right now, as far as um, where, um, as far as the uh, the tools went. Uh, so, for example, everybody got access to recruit uh, right off the bat. Now, I will say, um, having access to one of the most overpowered abilities in the game right from the get-go um, makes Chapter One super easy. But um, it. I mean, granted, it was never exactly, uh, it, it, it wasn't, um, it wasn't exactly, like, Palace of the Dead one vision to begin with, but, um, as far as, uh, as far as skills go, I don't know about adding recruits to everybody. I think what they were going for here was the whole kind of feeling that Knight of Lotus had in particular, uh, where, you know, all of your soldiers could recruit everything, but mostly what happened here was just recruit got thrown on practically every class. Now, on paper, that's cool. I am all for having more recruit skills and stuff like that, but a couple of uh, quick notes on this. The cost was reduced down to five. No, no, no. You want that thing to be balanced, you put it up to, like, 50. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I mean, it's basically a 20-30% chance to just be like, well, free action move, that guy's just on our side now. Um, like, I've been saying that it's ridiculously overpowered in the base game for a while. Seeing it get uh, buffed even harder here is uh, something. Anyway, um, so another thing that they actually did here, you might notice, uh, we are at Union level 50. Uh, so if you want to, you can grind to your heart's content. Um, I will note that it seems like weapon experience rates are a decent bit lower. Uh, basically across the board, it seems like it seems like weapons might be scaling uh, and kind of sticking to scaling uh, based off of their kind of lower level counterparts. Uh, they don't seem to be scaling up based off of your union level. I doubt that was an accident, but uh, it does mean that uh, weapons in general, like usually if you're on a casual playthrough by this point, most of your characters will have at least one finisher ready to go, or at least pretty close to ready to go. Um, like, I just kind of speed, uh, speed around through this thing in like an hour, and it, um, I mean, it, it's alright. It actually works pretty decently well. Um, I would assume that, uh, that this does end up uh, pacing out decently well, though it is kind of funny to see uh, with archers. Uh, they tried uh, uh, messing around with the, uh, with the range form a little, a little bit. Lower level archers got nerfed harder than ever, like for example, Sarah uh, with her basic grapo basically can't hurt anything right now. Um, meanwhile, Canopus is one-shotting bosses with a short bow. So, as far as that big tilting point, they definitely got the SNES feeling on that one. Uh, there is a, a, a kind of specific thing in SNES where just like, if you get a few points ahead, if you get a couple levels ahead, like, that guy's just steamrolling. And yeah, for a lot of cases, it was just send Canopus forward and he wins the entire fight. Um, I will note one, uh, okay, there's actually a couple of things that uh, that I thought were a really good uh, kind of starting point, though. Uh, I like I, while I did criticize some things, it is cool to see uh, recontextualization for a lot of things. Like for example, Hopanga wins is showing up a decent bit earlier now, and additionally, uh, the uh, the stagger that it inflicts is actually going to be very useful in this scenario. Uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, go into a uh, into a training fight here just to kind of show this off. But uh, the uh, the accuracy formula is. Uh, is essentially scaled way, uh, uh, way, uh, way down here. So, uh, effectively, what we're seeing is that uh, here. Who do we want to get rid of? We'll put our. No, we'll put denim away for now. Um, but effectively, what we're seeing is that uh, as far as the accuracy goes, uh, you're going to see people uh, missing and blocking attacks all the time. Now, this is kind of a double-edged thing uh, because it basically meant that if you're familiar with the accuracy formula at all, it is unbelievably easy. 
Um, but it also means that uh, that it will frustrate people. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Uh, there will be folks that will get frustrated at this. Um, and this is this is basically not necessarily good or bad. It is directly a choice. Uh, when it comes to accuracy and stuff like this, it's always going to be a bit of a constant uh, toss-up over you know when stuff's blocking, where and how, and all that kind of thing. So like in Tor's default state, it had uh, parry basically taking over for the default uh, hit and miss odds. Simply put, because the original hit and miss odds would more or less overwrite uh, or get overwritten uh, by passives. Uh, and so since the passives were taken out, it meant that accuracy would have remained relatively low if it stayed the way that it was. Um, because, you know, it was built around those passives, and then those passives took it a bit too far. Um, and ultimately, they're just like, okay, fine, everyone gets True Strike and True Flight, whatever. We're just going to operate off that assumption, and then Parry ends up uh, uh, kind of uh, playing more of a part, you know? So, in general, uh, it's uh, it's pretty darn solid there. Um, I will say, I... Obviously, I like the, the uh, vanilla formula there, and but uh, one of the cool things you'll notice, uh, you just saw it happen right there, um, is that we do have... Um uh, we do have cases uh, where we're uh, where we're seeing uh, debuffs and uh, spells and stuff like that being used. The caveat on this, though, um, is that it's achieved the same way that One Vision achieved a lot of its goals, uh, which is that the AI can't simply be told, "Okay, here's the on switch, here's the off switch for the stuff that you're allowed to use." Um, so if by default it's like they're set to just not view Paralytic Wave as a thing they can do, um, actually, let, let me explain this a little bit further. It seems like they have parameters based off of, like, kind of direct choices that they'll make here. So, like, with Paralytic Wave, they're like, it just inflicts stun. Well, I guess I can't do that, right? Because they're, you know, not intended to use those by default, so it has to have a damage number associated with it. Um, and that's obviously going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, I would assume this uh, the scale is a little better over time, but as far as uh, uh, as far as damage numbers go, uh, typically debuff spells are really, 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 really strong in this one. Uh, so this basically means that it kind of overheads got got screwed pretty hard. Uh, namely, that uh, I didn't see if overheads. Uh, uh, got back their 100% accuracy. I don't think so. Um, I forgot to actually check that. But it does mean the Paralytic Wave is oppressively powerful. <laughs> like, it's gonna typically be, like, half-killing something and then stunning an entire team. Like, they are absolutely screwed. So, that mess is hilarious. Um, so I will say, like, general difficulty-wise, this is probably the easiest Chapter 1 I think I've ever seen, but um, but it is a, a fun a fun thing to play around with. Uh, it is, it's a good start. Like, this, uh, this mod in general, I feel like it's a good start. Um, as I mentioned before, everybody gets access to Recruit. Uh, there are a number of skills that I don't know if we need to be handing out this early. Uh, some of them uh, seemingly were handed out for the purpose of giving them more variety, which is fair. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we might see more back attacks earlier on or something. Because uh, as it stands right now, uh, we've got everybody getting access to Recruit. Ridiculously strong. That, like, that's, uh, that, that's something that you can abuse to, uh, to an absolutely crazy degree. Uh, for another thing, Berserkers have Berserk in Chapter 1, which is, again, you know, fine on paper, but it also means that the basic Berserker, like I switched the uh, the initial Warrior Berserker to, uh, or, the, sorry, the initial uh, Warrior Amazon to a Berserker, and right off the bat, she one-shot Nybeth. Uh, like, we just went for early Nybeth, and, like, just absolutely slapped out of existence. Um, and that was before Breach. I want to point out, I have... Uh, one of the cool things that this thing did uh, was that it actually gave uh, Lobber to a lot of characters that previously uh, used it uh, back in PSP. Like, swapping out Meditate for Lobber on the Cleric? I like that. That's interesting. That's pretty darn cool. Um, uh, but yeah, even before Breach, even before Elements, there's a lot of characters that can just, like, one-shot bosses and stuff like that right out of the gate. Um, so, you know... Uh, maybe Berserkers don't quite need Berserk just yet. Like, if they got access to a high, their uh, their higher tier of Pinsir, um, you know, they, granted, I'm pretty sure she already does that, actually. No, like, if she got to, uh, P uh, Pinsir 2 at this point instead of Berserk, uh, that might help a little more. If more characters got stuff like a Back Attack or whatnot, that might help a little more. Um, uh, but yeah, Berserkers can just absolutely crush things. Uh, if you put in a element bonus, if you put in a breach, like it's just it's just absolutely night night time. <laughs> um, so either way, uh, that's uh, that's pretty neat there. Um, I assume this is probably meant to be played with the cards off. 
uh, because due to the lower numbers, at least again for chapter one, this is probably going to change over time, but at least for chapter one, uh, yeah, just getting a card to Knopus meant that again, he was he was already near one-shotting bosses before anything happened. Um, uh, but yeah, that definitely uh, kind of uh, sealed the deal. Like he was uh, he was shooting two fifties with a short bow uh, during that uh, that first uh, necromancer fight. Um, so there was that. Uh, also, she has an elemental disadvantage right now, and again can nearly one shot with Berserk here. I mean, don't get me wrong; it feels good, and this is a trading map. I'm just saying for the sake of uh, just kind of you know, arguing the point, so to speak. Um, it does seem like weapon balance is kind of all over the place. Like, it's cool. I like what they did with uh, with the weapons here. This is probably also worth mentioning. Um, as far as the weapons are concerned, they are given more roles. Uh, so, for example, the basic Sybil staff was given a parry to make up for the fact that it's absolute garbo otherwise, and also made... seeing stuff like the, uh, the staff here coming up in with a parry, I really like this. Uh, I like the... Uh, uh, the kind of overall stat allocation on this thing. Uh, yeah, basically, it feels like the Knight of Lotus Sybil Staff, and I am okay with that. Um, I mean, granted, in that one, it was like uh, the Sipple Staff, but still, whatever, you get the deal. Anyway, um, okay, um, let's see. Uh, okay, one kind of odd thing, I don't know if this was a number in the wrong place. Uh, so shields uh, seem to be stacking essentially five defense per tier, so like the Pelt is a 10, uh, the Buckler is a five, and then they give you a negative to avoidance. So they basically counteract your avoidance bonus. Mostly the reason that this feels weird is because, you know, sword and board, uh, they counter, uh, they kind of cancel each other out. So defensively speaking, you actually get a lot better uh, results by taking off your buckler and just running a short sword in the beginning, which is, I guess, a very SNES uh, kind of deal. Um, well, that's just kind of interesting there. Uh, the bronze helm makes you a little bit blind. This feels... Like, it. this is, this is funny because it feels like the... Uh, it makes sense, but it feels so weird after the light helmets are the accuracy option in one vision. <laughs> uh, not really the mods fall directly or anything, uh, but uh, just kind of funny there. Uh, also, um, yeah, as far as gloves are concerned, uh, leather sleeves, eight decks this early on <laughs> is, uh, is pretty awesome. Um, anyway, uh, so let's uh, go ahead and wrap up this fight here and uh, kind of uh, throw out a few more notes. Oop, there, there that thing goes. Apparently, I'm just knocking stuff over, as you do. Um, though, I will say, even with... So, th the accuracy thing, I would expect, would get on some folks' nerves. Um, and this is, again, why I'm pretty certain this was... E the accuracy uh, in vanilla was uh, was very intentional. Like, the way that it makes you uh, use your debuffs and stuff like that. Like, the locked-in hit odds and stuff like that. Uh, rather than going for the direct numbers, I would hope that the accuracy would get toned down a little bit. Because this heavily skews in favor of the player. Um, unless you're going to go give uh, guaranteed hit moves to the AI all over the place, this is very heavily skewed in the player's favor. Because uh, you can do a lot of things to guarantee your your uh, your hit odds and stuff like that. They are absolutely helpless when it comes to that. Um, so, for example, uh, Tremendous Shot is just like the absolute MVP <laughs> this thing right now. Um, not only is it near one-shotting stuff again even before any cards or anything else get involved, um, but uh, just the fact that everybody else is essentially doing coin flips on all their attacks and they can just walk in and delete stuff is uh, pretty hilarious. Same thing for stuff like Mighty Impact. Um, so it's, um, I, I feel like more back attacks are needed. That's, uh, I know it, it feels lame to go back to the old, here's how one version did it thing, but like, you know, it's it's had like a decade to refine itself. So <laughs> that's why it's uh, it's gotten a lot of stuff right. Um, actually, come to think of it, Oh yeah, this is just 10%. I, I was going to say, isn't this supposed to be a higher number, but I'm thinking of an uh, endgame version of it. Anyway, though, uh, let's see. As far as spells go, spells and weapons, they seem to have the same access, but uh, spells in general have new features um, and were repriced accordingly, so like Sleep and Paralytic Wave will do damage on top of what they already do. Um, and these actually are separate roles, so you can, for example, do damage and then not inflict the debuff and vice versa. Um, it's interesting. I... It's going to be difficult for them to figure out the balance uh, as far as damage goes, because if it's too low, the AI is just never going to use them. Uh, but currently, it's so high that there's little reason to use the basic attacks, so there's that. Um, I could be mistaken on this. I don't think the overheads were given their 100% uh, chance to hit back. Uh, I mean, I guess that's easy enough to test. Uh, here, let's just go ahead and turn them into uh, training real quick and uh, give that a little bit of a look. Um... Uh, so let's see. Uh, overall feedback on this whole thing. So, 
first things first on the recruit thing. Um, I, I assume that they were going for the SNES version and then kind of leaned into the Knight of Lotus version. Um, I think what they need to do is actually uh, start off Denim as Lord with all recruit skills, uh, if they were going for the SNES version. Uh, reason for this is because uh, those that have never played the classic version, uh, Denim is the only one that can actually recruit, and he's able to recruit everything. So if you locked everything, all, all of those skills to Lord, and made negotiation his thing, like, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, that uh, that would work pretty darn well here. Also, wait a minute. Hold on. Maybe they did buff the, uh, the AoEs. Let's go ahead and go for some staff bonks here for a few more points. Because, uh, yeah, those overheads are at 50. That's uh, interesting. Uh, didn't seem like didn't seem like they were getting that much when um, uh, when when I was testing earlier. But hey, you know you never know. I gotta see why this is so expensive. Um, if it is uh, if it is overheads or uh, sorry if they did get their uh, their overheads and stuff that'd be or their uh, guaranteed overheads that'd be uh, quite something. But I guess we'll find out in a moment because right now that is expensive. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, let's see, as far as the overall class feel, uh, yeah, warriors and archers are nutty powerful, I guess, technically, so are, you know, casters and such. Um, so there's that. Uh, any, and just like SNES, though, the accuracy thing kind of falls apart after the first, uh, first hour or so, uh, seeing as you can immediately get a couple characters that are just highly accurate or powerful or whatever else, and just kind of steamroll. Um... And this is before the uh, whole uncapped level thing. So if somebody was looking for an ultra easy mode, uh, obviously, you know, being able to uh, to go well beyond this is uh, certainly going to be up some folks' alley. Main downside of that of that whole particular idea is just the fact that uh, if anybody's going down that route and then they end up getting to the uh, kind of way way later sections of the game, um, even if, for example, it wasn't adjusted, uh, you know, adjusted for this version, uh, kind of as it is right now, um, I would expect, uh, that, uh, that folks might potentially get frustrated at that point just, uh, due to not being familiar with the mechanics of the thing. Um, uh, I will say one thing, I hope that one of these mods do, I'm really hoping that one of the other two mods uh, will do this, uh, at some point, maybe this one will do it at some point too, um, and that's just to emphasize the debuffs. So, like, like, in this particular instance, um, as far as any of these characters go, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and have the cleric go throw a breach on somebody. Like, teaching somebody to use breach this early on, uh, would be a, a massive benefit. Um, like, just, at some point, forcing a character to use breach. I don't know, add a damage number, make the, uh, maybe combine the shot grenades and the, um, uh, and the, uh, uh, the Dynasty King's Mead to make the most OP item ever, but, like, having an NPC somehow use a Breach item, or having a friendly character use a Breach item, or something along those lines, uh, would go a long way towards teaching new folks how to, uh, how to play this thing. Um, because, again, like, this, and I don't mean to criticize here, as far as a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas in this game go, in a lot of cases it felt like, uh, like cases where somebody had an idea in mind over how, you know, something should work uh, out of the box or whatever else, and then the in-game kind of existing mechanics were ignored here. So, like, we'll go ahead and breach that unit, and that's probably just going to be a one-shot. Like, for, from anybody, that will probably end up being a one-shot now. Like, out of curiosity, with our Berserker, like, yeah, if, if her Berserk had rolled, she'd be doing 200 plus right now. Um... But, uh, and that's that's even at an elemental disadvantage, uh, disadvantage so she's losing 30% uh, on that. Uh, so, just kind of throwing that out there. I, in a lot of cases, I just don't know if these were kind of balanced for existing mechanics as much as focusing on rewriting the stuff that was already there, you know, instead of emphasizing the good parts. <laughs> so, um, alright, anyways, so that's that section done. I will say certain weapons uh, feel like... Or rather, anybody that kind of rolls, um, rolls, uh, lower in their stats and stuff like that, um, I feel like, uh, they, they tend to get a little bit, uh, screwed here, like, uh, any characters, like, let's say, you saw Voltaire over there, with his, uh, with a sword and everything, he has consistently been slightly, not even slightly, he does, like, a tenth of the damage everyone else does. He's great on vitality, he's an absolute beef wall, uh, but yeah, as far as, uh, anything offense-related... Uh, for whatever reason, uh, actually, come to think of it, looking at the numbers, it is weird that he does so little, uh, all kind of across the board here. 
I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm missing something, but uh, yeah, he does seem to be just kind of more or less planking off of everything. He is still running a basic, basic uh, short sword. And again, just kind of like ran through the uh, the beginning of the game here. Um, anyways, overall, final thoughts on this whole thing, though, is that, uh, yeah, this is this is cool. Like, here, let's go over the balance of these things real quick, because it seems like they liked their increments of five for everything. It's kind of like moderate upgrades as far as these weapons go. Um, interesting to see the uh, the stone bow uh, getting <laughs> more than uh, more than double the bonus once it goes up here. Um, uh, though it doesn't really seem to hit as, as hard as you'd kind of think, so I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, Warrior and Defender Rings got put back to their PSP numbers. Um, chain Leggings feel like a massive downside. Like, losing 10 Dex and 10 Avoidance is 110% uh, just plain not worth it. Um, so, yeah, like, hard defense numbers uh, do seem like they like what they were kind of fishing for here. Um, I feel like a lot of the downsides on the equipment are a little much at the moment, since oftentimes, like, let's say, putting something like Chainmail... Like great defense, decent uh, decent weight and stuff like that, um, and then just running no pants would end up being the uh, the way to go there. And you'll actually notice uh, from the uh, from the AI, in many cases they'll be doing the same thing. However, it's also worth noting that um, uh, that uh, this is mostly from Nybeth's team. Everybody else just sort of has their usual scattering of different stuff. Um, okay. Uh, so this thing with the with the shields and dropping avoidance severely, uh, you basically stop dodging if you put on a shield, but it's not really enough defense to make you completely give away just losing or missing attacks all the time, so uh, I feel like that would probably want to go down at some point or have something better, because as far as I've seen, the uh, uh, aside from knockback, the shields have just kind of been not worth it for anyone that's uh, in the front at all. Um, as far as equipment goes, I would assume some of this stuff will be a bit more available as time goes on. Um, let's see here. Yeah, again with, like, the weird downsides and stuff like this. Like, I get dexterity going down for gauntlets, but at the same time, that is a hell of a lot of offense that's basically just getting rid of that strength bonus. So, at that point, like, that two defense is not worth it. This thing is giving you good bonuses for both strength and dex characters, this is basically just giving you almost no bonus at twice the weight and uh, barely, uh, barely more defense. You know, like unless we got something extra on bonuses. Like yeah, the, the, it's just yeah, gauntlets are kind of, kind of screwed here. In fact, that's probably. Do you have gauntlets, Voltaire? Is that your deal? No, you're uh, you're running sleeves. Hell, you'd assume you'd be doing better here. Um, maybe they f they uh, screwed around with the formula a uh, little bit to uh, to give more weight off of strength and dex. I'm not sure. Um, though I will say, even in SNES, it was pretty universal. So that that would be an interesting take on it. Alrighty, <laughs> let's see. Uh, what else are we uh, potentially missing here? Uh, so no new uh, early class unlocks or anything. Um, as far as early skills go. Uh, we get less stuff on the Fencer, who basically just gets Constitution and Insight. Uh, everybody gets Recruit. Uh, the Resists will probably make a bit more sense, though it would be good to see stuff like Resist uh, Sleep and Resist uh, uh, Stun uh, showing up instead of these two early on. Uh, feels like maybe that might happen down the road, if I were to guess. Um, yeah, Mighty Impact is crazy strong. Uh, at, like, at 40, it is... It's still, uh, it's still very cheap, especially considering you don't have finishers yet. And I would imagine it probably would end up being more useful than finishers, even when they uh, are popping up here. Um, uh, so let's see. Kasha's abilities are just fine here. Uh, she gets Meditate and Lobber, so that's kind of neat uh, right off the get-go. Uh, Berserkers having access to Berserk uh, this early is hilarious. In fact, they were already up to Sanguine. So at that point, like we, we've got... <laughs> in theory... Before elemental advantages, she could be dropping casual, like, 400s at this point in Chapter 1, so that's something. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, Tremendous Shot is, again, insanely strong so far. It seems like they nerfed it on account of giving it up to 60 uh, for its cost, uh, but that's still pretty easy for them to do. I just noticed I completely did not test the thing I was meaning to test there. Um, let's go check if they have uh, leaves at the store, actually. Got way too distracted on that... Yeah, of course they do. That makes sense. Okay. All right, so we'll throw them back into training here, and then we'll go ahead and use a couple of those leaves instead, and then we'll uh, test how strong this is. Uh, so let's see. With everybody's um, uh, everybody's numbers more or less made universal, 
Uh, this means that, uh, generally speaking, it's going to be your, uh, your weight and class that determines uh, your recovery time. Uh, so let's see, who's got on the lower end here? Eh, that probably should be enough-ish. I imagine you're probably on the low end too. Here, let's go ahead and give you one of these. And then that should be enough uh, to see her doing this on at least round two. And then we'll go from there. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, overall, my feelings on this whole thing are that I like it. Uh, I think it's a, it's a definitely a good start. It's got it's got uh, its head in the in the right place. Uh, as far as the coin flip misses, um, it, it, like it's it's fine. Um, I would assume that's something that'll get uh, worked on over time. Would like to see more. Uh, more from that in terms of equipment choices, uh, because, again, it feels like heavy equipment is very heavily penalized right now, uh, without necessarily having uh, much in the way of, uh, of trade-offs, so, you know, maybe there's that. Again, maybe if I switched out uh, Voltaire for Gauntlets, he'd be doing more with swords and such. Um, though, it is uh, it is interesting to, uh, to see that, uh, kind of realistically speaking, swords would generally be the more... Uh, uh, dexterous option. Spears would usually be the, the uh, strength option, but RPGs refuse to look at that reality, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, but uh, but Tio uh, generally has gotten... It had that understanding uh, from back on the SNES. Anyway, though, uh, here, let's uh, let it all do its thing, and then our caster should be back up to scratch. So, okay, it does have its guaranteed, uh, guaranteed overheads. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so it does have that back. Um, it is uh, worth uh, the cost there, so I take that back entirely. Um, it is very expensive, though. Like, uh, that's, that's kind of nuts. Also, it's interesting, uh, that, uh, that, yeah, without, uh, without matching elements and stuff like that, um, her personal element, uh, carries out, a, uh, carries that forward a lot more than I would have thought. Um, but, uh, anyways. Alright, that's all I had, uh, time for here today, so I think this is a, this is a great start. I think this is gonna be something that'll, uh, that'll, uh, look, uh, better and better as time goes on. Uh, so, a couple of things. Maybe replace Tremendous Shot with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Back Attack or Eagle Eye or, like, don't get me wrong, Eagle Eye, I think, is the better version of Tremendous Shot down the road anyway, but just accuracy over, uh, over damage might help them a bit more. Um, I kind of feel like the cost of the overhead should maybe go to a 45 or so. Like, it is 100%, sure. Uh, at this point, uh, it is pretty expensive for them to get. Um, not to mention, they don't seem... Do they actually have Meditate yet? Let's, uh, let's retreat out of here, see if they got Meditate. Uh, cause last I checked, she didn't have Meditate, <laughs> so there was that, too. Uh, I could have just missed it, again, I was just kind of rushing through, but, uh, uh let's go ahead and double-check that real quick. Uh, here, let's go here. I'm sure you got Meditate, right? No, you still don't have Meditate, so... Okay, uh, so if they're not gonna have Meditate, maybe bring the cost down a little bit. Um, I kind of feel like just... Keeping keeping meditate one rank lower, or just keeping them at one, uh, and then keeping that uh, speed thing would be a kind of interesting way for them to go, because uh, they're one of the few classes that's always genuinely been able to uh, to use their uh, their fast turns and a lower rank of meditate to just keep themselves funded. Um, it's just that they didn't have anything more expensive to kind of coup de gras with later, so it is cool to see the overheads kind of taking that uh, that particular thing. But again, they're like they're not necessarily getting much from this. Um, unless Insight were to boost MP generation, which it doesn't seem to do right now. Uh, so, like, one of the quirks of the earlier versions was that uh, having a higher MP bar used to increase your generation here. Um, this, uh, in this version, it's more for the purpose of uh, banking and for the purpose of using uh, percentage revives to give yourself a guaranteed amount of MP. Um, so it would be cool to see uh, maybe some of the old clarity bonuses applied to Insight or something. Uh, but uh, just kind of throwing that out there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, these guys have, I mean, it seems like they're, uh, they're substituting, uh, Meditate for Magic Leaves. I don't personally like that, but it, you know, it, I get where they're coming from. Uh, I love the Lobber changes on the Cleric. Uh, the Berserker is hilariously strong right now. Um, Knights, uh, they're fine. Um, they, like, they work well enough. Um, I'm not really feeling Guardian Force over some of the other stuff, but it, it's fine. They're a good little, uh, little meatball. Um, <clears throat> like I'll say, as far as, uh, equipment and stuff goes, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I feel like, uh, I mean, I, Guardian Force works fine. I, it, it works fine enough. It's weird to not see them having Rampart Aura this early, but whatever. It's exactly fine, you know? 
Uh, let's see. The downsides on the shields feel a bit steep for what they do, but, you know, maybe they were going somewhere with this. Um, like, I feel like hard defense, like, they were going for just a, a more effective hard defense thing, as far as I can tell. Um, I feel like the differences would have to be a bit larger to notice, um, but, uh, again, that's just kind of where it is right now. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean too much for the future. Um, and one more thing that I should probably mention here. One of the downsides of, uh, of these overheads being so expensive where they are right now and not having meditate this early is that the AI will just straight up never use them. Now, this could be an intended design decision. I don't know. Um, but uh, they will basically spam all of these other ones to the point that they'll never get to this because uh, the AI typically will just take the, the current most effective possible action in its own eyes. Um, so may not be doing stuff like that. But lastly, again, as I mentioned before, it would be cool to see uh, Denim uh, kind of starting off as uh, uh, as a lord with access to all recruit skills, and then just taking them away from everybody else if we're going for that SNES feeling. Um, because again, in that particular case, you know, he'd be the main negotiator. Maybe give it a different name or something, but you know, that way he would have access to all spells, all equipment, and all recruit skills, but no kind of direct skills, as it were, you know? Which feels like a pretty interesting kind of diplomatic uh, take on the character there. Um, again, a bit more kind of SNES flavored in that regard. Anyway, that's all I had time for here today, so y'all have yourselves a good one, take care, uh, thank you for stopping by in this little ramble, and, uh, and yeah, I know I got a couple stuff, a couple of uh, things wrong and then circled back to it. These things will happen, this is just kind of like a first impressions ramble kind of deal. All right, you'll have yourselves a good one, and to the guy that made this mod, thank you. It's a pretty cool mod. I'm looking forward to see how it'll work up in the in the future. There, y'all take care now.